The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Trapton here on this Tuesday, the 29th of October. We're looking at the Dow down only 16 now, just down 190 at some point, 42,372. Uh, I want to see that nine period moving average, which went pink yesterday, go back to green in the next day or two. And it's going to need a little more than that. It's going to have to get to the 42,000, probably 500s to do that. Well, we're looking at the technicals. On the daily now, a little bit uh, weak. Price is holding reasonably well, but I have got this as a sell signal. Uh, we'll have to see what happens today, whether it gets upgraded to a sell mode in the daily chart. Weekly chart is at a peak E underneath the inside track repellent zone, and the monthly chart is in a leg E. So I, to put this to sum it up, I have to say that this is going to be a really important first two weeks of, of November. And I'll go get into that in a little while. But in the meantime, let me show you something very interesting. S&P had an alternate count. I'm calling that a peak D. That's what I called it uh, recently when it made that 5878.46 high. It was the Dow that, that had that alternate count. So as it says right now, uh, the S&P is down just two at 5821. We're looking at the nine period moving average still very strong above the 14 period moving average. So that's a good sign. With this uh, chart, I've got this as a peak C. So we should have a pop to the 5878.47 or higher level to get to that leg D. And it's a leg F in the monthly chart. So you can see that all of these charts are getting to a point where if certain things happen, for instance, you have the QQQ, the QQQ um, 50. 503.32 was the all-time high back in June. But look at this. 50, there we go. 500.28 was the most recent high that was last week. So we like a hair breadth. I mean, this is like an eye blink away from going to an all-time high. If we do that, that means that the monthly chart has gone to a leg D. So in the Chapman Wave methodology, from a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, it it foretells that there should be at least four higher peaks. Peak A is the first peak, B is the second, peak C higher high above B is uh, third, and D is the fourth. It can go all the way to a G, but D is the objective in a Chapman Wave buy mode. Doesn't matter what time frame it is. Well, look at this. If we go to a leg D, finally you've got the Dow at a point higher than D. You've got the S&P at a point higher than D in the monthly chart. Finally, you've got the Invesco QQQ Trust Series going to, it hasn't done it yet, but going to a D. And look at this, the Compex, oops, let me get that right, C-O-M-P-X. That's the very broad, over 2,000 stocks in the NASDAQ Composite Index has already gone to an E. So there's a divergence between the 100 and the, call it the 2000 composite index. Uh, so all we're waiting for is the is the um, NDX 100, the QQQs, to go to that high. Let me just show you something else here, NDX dot X. So that has to go all the way. 20,690 was the high back in June, I think it was. Let me just double check. Uh, July, July, the week of the 12th. 20,690.97. If it goes to point 98 in the next, uh, well, anytime in the next, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be this month, it could be next month, that gives you your leg D. And then it says, oh, from here, you've got to be a little bit careful to assess whether or not there's a continuation pattern. Look at the SMHs, semiconductors. The SMH, nice move up today, up to at 253.24, but it hasn't taken out the most recent high, which is in the 260 area, but it definitely hasn't gone even close to 283.07, the high of July, this, uh, the 14th, the week of the 14th of July. It's just been in a sideways consolidation phase 
after a peak D in the monthly chart. You can see what I'm, I'm getting to here. And let's go to the, um, I needed to do this. Yes, so I wanted to go to gold. Gold all-time high up 20 at 27.76. Leg E in the weekly chart. Leg C in the monthly. That means there should still be a higher high to come in 2024 in the gold continuous contract monthly chart. And it's gone higher than the one-to-one -one that I has had as a target on the upside. Reason why we've continued to hold our gold position. Uh, we'll see what happens next. Let's go to silver. Silver is trading. Um, that's up 1.69 percent of 57 cents at 34.58 it's got a little way to go to go to a leg d in the weekly chart in the daily chart weekly chart i've still got as a leg c it's got the whole week in which to extend that leg c or maybe next week it goes to a leg d uh, we'll see what happens but 33.071 071 starts a new leg d so that'll be the uh, silver contract. Look at the GDX. And I, I was talking to someone earlier this morning. The gold stocks have not participated the way gold itself has. And I'm, I'm inclined to think that the gold has a much greater relationship to the Middle East than to actual gold. And silver has, is, is also a commercial product much more than gold. So they have a slightly separate, the, the connotations that are slightly different. So the GDX, PG, uh, maybe G slash C in the daily, but so far the G seems appropriate. A leg D, maybe a peak D this week in the weekly chart, and a leg D in the monthly. Isn't that interesting? All right, so a couple of things we need to go to. Yeah, let's go to high grade copper. High grade copper is going nowhere. It's unchanged at 4.36. It's just stuck in the low range. I wanted to go to, I just want to go to platinum for a moment. PL, platinum peak A. BC. Yeah, Platinum is making this W formation in the weekly chart, but the monthly says, ah, oh, it's still got a long way to go. So the daily chart, let me give the give you this peak A, peak B, peak C, leg D. Leg D, and that's quite important uh, in Platinum, starting to do much, much better. I needed to go to, okay, so I wanted to go to the dollar, DXY, making a recovery high, F slash B. Uh, a in the weekly chart, monthly chart looks just like a lowercase h that goes to lowercase m. So it's in a rectangle sideways trading band. Uh, we'll see what happens next. But this is really strong leg A in the weekly chart. But the stochastic hasn't gone to 80% yet. It's at 70%. So I'm watching it closely. Look at the EUR, USD. We are still along the dollar from 2018. Euro is at a low right now at 1.07%. Uh, the nine is way under the 14. That says it's going to take a lot for the euro to get po go co positive again. USD JPY making a leg G alternate count could be uh, a C. Uh, yeah, it could be a C G says C in the daily chart leg A like the dollar. Uh, so where the yen goes, usually the dollar is the dollar and the yen go in the same direction, not the same proportions. Although this time they have. So I needed to, okay, we've got a break coming up. I want you to go to a couple of things. I had a question. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions that I want to get to um, in the meantime. Yes, okay. I'll be back in a moment. The Dow is down five. Let's see if he's down one. You go right. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So uh, questions have come in. Let me just do this. I need to finish a couple of things first. So the TBT, which is the inversion of the uh, uh, TLT, uh, Ultra Short Lehman 20-Year Treasury Bond ETF, it's gone to a leg D finally in the daily chart. Single leg A. How many times have we looked at the, these? What's fascinating to me is how chart patterns form. And once they tell you this is the fractal that you've got to be monitoring, it appears in even unlikely, not, not parallel sectors, but unlikely sectors. Look. Yeah, you go, this is a TBT. Well, this is the same chart we were looking at in the dollar. Um, we were looking at in the euro, single leg A to the upside. Um, weekly charts improving, it's not great, but that's a TBT. But if you go to the TNX, this is the yields, the 10-year yields. There's that single leg A up. I've got a leg F in the uh, daily chart, leg A in the, in the weekly chart. And it's kind of almost a head and shoulders pattern off a, a key support level in the uh, monthly chart for the 10-year T-note. And here it is at 43.10, 4.310%. So um, just fascinating. So I needed to do this. I want you to go to the Bitcoin. Bitcoin is up quite nicely. It's up uh, 1985 at 72,285. This is a leg C. It's broken. Remember, I discussed this for a couple of weeks now. I've been saying... I'm beginning to like uh, the Bitcoin. I think later in October, maybe early in November, we start to see a breakout of the Chapman Wave inside repellent zone. And lo and behold, we've got that breakout this week. The week's young. It's only Tuesday, not even Tuesday. I mean, Tuesday's not even an hour into the trading session. So this is a very nice move to the upside. And you remember I was talking about the fractals, about patterns that repeat in regards of time frame. Well, look at the monthly chart. Yes, your huge cup formation with a handle 
And look at this. This is the IYT. This is the uh, this is the iShares Transportation Average ETF. There's the same thing. Transports and Bitcoin. I mean, what's the relationship? No relationship. Just a chart pattern. Cup and a handle. And that's what I'm anticipating here that we're going to see in Bitcoin. We've actually, we've started to see it very nicely. Um, so next thing I want to look at here is, so I had a question. Um, I like this question, it says. Hi, Basil. Hi. Uh, can you please take a look at DJT stock? Uh, can you analyze what will happen to the stock if Trump wins or loses? Is the stock destined to go down either if Trump wins or loses the election, or can it be sustained and go higher if he wins, like a GameStop cult stock? Thanks, Eddie. So, Eddie, let me go there, DJT. And I'm kind of upset because I looked at this and I thought, you know, I don't care whether you, uh, wh whatever you think of Trump, this is almost like when you look at a tobacco stock or you look at a stock that you uh, environmentally unfriendly, whatever it is, if you want to make money in the stock market, Either you're going to set your morals aside to say, hey, I'm looking only at the chart pattern and I want to buy it. It doesn't matter what I'm thinking about other things. It's a chart that the stock market is there to be able to help us make money. And that's the way you look at it. Or you get uh, you get uh, some kind of morality for some people. They'll dive in and say, oh, boy, I, I want to buy this. And others will say, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Well, if you didn't touch it at 11.75, the lower of the September, and today it hit 54.30. I would say that if you're in the stock market to make money, then you just have to look at it and say, well, that's what happens. So let me answer the question in another way. Trump Media and Technology Group, uh, D, DJT, is down $1.33. That sounds like, oh, my God, it's down at 46.03. Well, it hit 54.30 this morning. It had a gap up yesterday, a gap up this morning because it opened at 54.30. The high was, oh, sorry, it opened at 53.75, high was 54.30. So here's the answer. It's a really simple answer. I don't know. How can anybody really know? Because um, you might get to sell the news, just a pure technical sell the news. We've got a whole week to go between now, having hit 54, and a week from today, you could see a slide down to 37.50 and then a move up to 65.20. And by Tuesday, by Monday, Monday's close, it could be anywhere. So I'm going to try to answer it the best I can on a purely tactical basis. This is a stock that went to 79.38 back March of 24, March of this year. It was tootling around. It had one peak D from a starting point back in 2023, and that was the week of the 17th at 12.34, and it screamed to 26, uh, 25.85 peak D in the weekly chart on the week of the 21st of July 2023, comes plummeting down to the 13s, has another move up to another peak D, 79.38, March of the uh, March of the week of the 29th, and it comes plummeting down from 79 down to 11.75, and that was uh, the end of September, and it's had a single leg up, it's done this very often, right to a Fibonacci number, 618, uh, retracement to today's high of 54.30. So it shows you it's got a characteristic of going to D. It's done it twice in a weekly chart, very unusual. Almost all the same characteristics by a spike, a chain wave, a, Roman, a, a red Roman, in this case a green Roman candle uh, in, in March, and comes down and takes the lower part out, and that, that, that was a, a signal to say be careful. So all I'm going to say to you is, it's almost, a, yes, a GameStop type, GCE, is that GameStop, GCE? No, uh, G GME, GME, is, am I correct? Yeah, GameStop, GME. So you can see there's a single leg right up there in the week of, I think it was March, 
targets the 60s, comes all the way down into the into the 18s, and now it's at 22. So all I'm going to say to you is, if you want this as a long-term position, you have to think of it. Now, I, you didn't say whether you are long or you have any position. All you want to know is about the stock. I do know some people that got in earlier, and all I'm going to say to them is, take money off, treat it as, as an opportunity to garner some profits. And if you can keep a core position, I would put my stop in a little bit above my entry point so that no matter what happened, I'm making money. I tell you why, because if it takes out your stop, it could actually go down a lot deeper. So in that regard, I'm going to say to you, you this is the same as, oh, I haven't got it in front of me. I think it's Investor's Business Daily. Maybe I can do that during the break. Investor's Business Daily has a little section there where people are voting uh, on Trump or, or Harris. And now I can't remember exactly. I think Trump was maybe a fraction ahead when I last looked at it. I haven't looked at it lately. So the answer that I'm going to give to you, I'll complete it when we get back. I just wanted to say now the Dow is up 101, the S&P is up 12. This is the action that we needed to see today, and I'll talk about it as soon as I return. And uh, there's a lot going on I want to cover today. I'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. We're back. Thanks for that uh, Direction uh, ad that we have. We actually have sometimes. We have Direction shares, and you're in really great. So what we're looking at here uh, with the E-mini as a big spike to peak F in the one-minute chart, only a C in the uh, five-minute chart. Think of it as a weekly chart, but a leg, single leg A, and that A is really important now because if this – uh, it goes underneath 58.54. It's at 58.58 right now. That's almost like a single leg failure pattern. You need very quickly to get to 58.65. It's going to be tough to do. Um, <coughs> so let me get back to this. So in answer to the question about DJT, my, I'm just going to assume that you are in a position uh, that, that you already own it. If you already own it, I'm going to say to you once again, I would make sure... I wouldn't keep it as a core position regardless of whether it goes down or goes up. I, I would treat that, as I say, I would have taken a little bit off on that probably yesterday or today, just a little bit as money management. <coughs> I would keep my core and I'd raise the stop on the core to just a little above my entry point. I'd actually split it. I'd have some quite a bit above. It depends where you got in. And one, so that you don't take a loss under any circumstances. Why? Because if it goes under your entry point, you can actually go a lot uh, a lot lower. Now, one of the things that I'm looking at is if Trump wins, this obviously is in play. I think there'll be the normal selling pressure at some point. But I think this become a leg A, maybe a peak A in two weeks' time. And then there should be a move that takes you, maybe not, to the 175 all-time high that was made back in 2021. But at least it could take you back to the 7938 area. So the whole thing is, if it, at some point in the next year or two, if you find out who wins, um, just a little joke, um, if it's Trump, I would stay with the position as long as I can. I'd then have a core position, and if it's still holding, I'd have a trading position, I'd trade around it. And that's the best thing that I could say. If Trump loses, I don't think this is going to look very pretty at all. Uh, there's just so much that is going to uh, – he, he's going to be affected tremendously on the negative side. So be very, very careful. I'm even going to put Tesla in that category. Tesla's act, had act, acted very well, had a, a couple of round numbers that we're getting over the last uh, couple of days. It had, had that single leg A to the upside, E slash A, and I'm watching it very closely. But I would then put it if, if uh, Trump wins and whatever happens with Musk. And I, I'm not that happy to have somebody uh, so close who has the business. Does he sever all ties with the I don't know what he does. Whatever it is, this could get a lot shakier. All right, so I'm done with that. Next question was Costco. Costco is holding okay. Um, it had an all-time high back in around about the 16th of September, up in the nine, 920s. It's pulled back. I don't really know what to call this on a purely technical basis. I think I should call it a B, but really it could be an alternate count. In the weekly chart, leg D is very clear in the monthly chart, and I have so many Ds coming up and Es in so many charts. And I, I wanted to spend a whole bunch of time yesterday. I spent oh, about an hour or two looking at so many charts over the weekend that had round numbers, at highs, uh, stocks that made these double tops that I've been talking about for a little while. Was J.P. Morgan one of those? Yeah, J.P. Morgan, 225.92. I retested it yesterday. Today it spiked a little higher, 226.75. That's a leg D. Finally, it's got a D there. It's got an E in the weekly chart. So... I would not be surprised if because of, of market conditions being impacted by political conditions next week that we do see some shakiness. And it just looks to me like the market's getting ready for something like that. So I won't have time to do all of that. <coughs> so Costco, 
Holding well, Costco changes its character on the short term, not the weekly chart, but the short term at 224.02 down a dollar forty-eight right now. If it closes under 218, that's a that that's saying be careful because it could pull back into the low teens. And if it closes any day, if it hits uh, 228.75 up in the high 220s, <coughs> excuse me, that's going to be a very important move and say that at least in the short term, you're raising the base of support. Okay, if you're long, I this is one of those stocks um, in this environment. Oh, so the JP Morgan I was talking about. I meant to go to Costco. That's the pattern that we're looking at. Let me just get there. JP Morgan is the one I was talking about. Costco is the one that was asked about. And Costco, oh, in the lower range, um, at 887 right now, if Costco starts to trade, not it can't just slip down there, but if it actually trades and closes any Friday underneath 852, is it 887 right now? That will tell me that it's now in a digestive phase. If it manages a move, I don't know if it can get in this particular environment, if it can go to the 920. This is the all-time high. On the 13th of September, 923.83. Okay, 923.83. If it can go to the 928 level in the next two weeks, wow, that is really positive. So Costco, uh, unlike Walmart, has, oops, let me show you Walmart, a little different pattern. Both did extremely well. One is digesting. And one made an all-time high and is within pennies of the all-time high. As we speak, it made a peak C. It should go to a D and then Walmart. So chart-wise, Walmart is a way better chart, but way more extend, extended in the uh, week, in the monthly chart and even the daily, G slash C. You didn't ask me about that. You asked me about Costco, but I needed to put them together because they've been lead, leaders in this whole retail sector for quite a while. Costco is the one that's taking a, a digestive phase, and I think that digestive phase to my eye, with a nine period moving average so strong in the weekly chart, says that it could go sideways a little longer to get to become a negative chart, 852 to 848. If it gets tagged, that's going to be the digestive phase starting in Costco. Next question was NEO. So NEO is. Um, the Chinese EV company, horrible, horrible monthly chart. <coughs> Weekly chart had a big spike up and has come back down. Monthly chart had a big spike, went to the 750s and now it's pulled back sharply. You know, I don't see very much here. I see some spikes to the upside. I think making lower highs and lower lows for the moment is really what I foresee. If it takes that 540 support, is at 569, that's a problem. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, 
you don't have to worry about that. As Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So a question about Clark's Inc. That's fashion shoes, Peak D in the monthly chart under the previous Peak D. Uh, that was a Peak G. I'm always a little bit worried about that. Uh, we just saw that in the one-minute chart right here. We made a Peak D underneath the previous high. But here's the pattern. If it's making a rectangle with a lopsided cup formation, um, making higher highs and higher lows, it can go to a D or even an E just under, right on, a, uh, just above the previous high. This is a little different because this made the pattern that I call the dreaded H. What's that? That's where the price comes down sharply, down sharply, and arches over at a peak A or B and then fails and takes out the left side low. Well, look what happened. That's exactly what happened. And this is a weekly chart, so I have to wait for Friday to see for closes underneath this low of 112.50. The low today so far is 111.20. So watching this very closely, but it is a peak D in the monthly chart. And what did I get in the daily chart? It went to a peak D, then an E. And then the reason I always keep that intact is that unless it takes out the starting point low, you continue this as if it's peak A, peak B, and then the new high is an F slash C because it didn't take out the previous low, so it could be a continuation pattern, and you wait to see what happens next. Well, there was a doji candle, sharp pull back, and lo and behold, it just gapped down, so that made, would, made that a peak F. And there's your dreaded H. The dreaded H is when you take out the left side low, what happens after you take this left side low out uh, is very important because if it closes decisively below, it could do one to one to the downside, all right? And on the upside, green reverse Y, dreaded H, 
Reverse Y means if you take out that left side high, what happens then? Well, uh, let's see an example. Oh, I may as well just do this. I always use this as an example. Uh, this, this chart here, look, there's your reverse Y. And it went to peak A, peak B. Now it's gone to a C. And there's a good candle today. It's up 35 cents to 73.72. There's a chance that over a period of maybe a week or two that you could get to a leg D. It's not a one-to-one -one of the arch, but still, that's a pretty good move. Uh, Solventum is the, isn't it? Well, we are along this. But I just want to use this as an example of the reverse of the dreaded H. This is a, the bullish Y, reverse Y. Took out the left side, made a cup and a handle. Did it know that it's making a cup and handle? No, it didn't. But that's the kind of pattern that we're looking at here. So that, that's the fractal that I'm talking about uh, in different areas, different, uh, different sectors. So a question came in. Basil, based on your assessment of all the major ind indexes, it sounds like the chances are much greater of the market dropping 2 to 4% before going higher. If so, isn't this a perfect time to hold more cash? You know, that's a question that I've been working on for quite some time. So let me just go to this and, and explain what, what I'm, I'm doing here. Well, as a subscriber, you should know what I'm doing. What I'm doing is we have got different sectors within the market. We're looking at under the radar sectors that are not at this particular moment really uh, beholden to the general market. For instance, Solventum, the stock I just showed you, that's in the healthcare. So in a way, up until Tuesday, this coming a week from today, it's kind of independent. You know, what happens after this could be uh, impact, impactful. Um, our bank stock, it's still acting pretty well. And that's because the rates are, are, are high and it's usually good. The higher rates are usually good for the uh, financials. In the... Um, uh, the um, the broker area, we've got a stock that's making highs, not all-time highs, but uh, yearly highs, uh, uh, all the time. And that's because we're in to we're in a gold. I think that these folks are in the the gold area, and they're in the uh, Bitcoin area. So it, it kind of benefits us. And also, we've wanted to be in the uh, brokerage area. We are along the IAI, which is all the way back from 2020. So that's a core position long from the low that was made then. Uh, that's something different. And then Microsoft. Microsoft is, <clears throat> you know, it's just a great stock. I think it comes out with earnings. Uh, when is earnings? I think it's uh, Wednesday. I think it's tomorrow. I don't know if it's during the day or after the bell. <clears throat> but Microsoft, I think, is just digesting huge gains. And I think they could continue for a little while longer. But it's a fantastic company. And we're in from way lower down. <clears throat> so you can see, I'm looking at this we're in um, agriculture. So we're really in gambling. We're in all sorts of areas. So we've raised a little bit of cash because we were long the IWM. We're still long the IWM, where we had an aggressively long position, took profits in that, and a tiny little loss as well, but mostly the profits made up for that. And I didn't, I said, in my newsletter yesterday, we might on Tuesday go long, uh, uh, three times long, but then I decided, no, I, I, it's just a little risky right now. I would rather be building up a little cash position. I, it, let's just imagine the market soars because of whatever the results are in the election. You can always get in. You've got plenty of time. But what if it tanks? I want to be in areas that have some kind of some kind of area of security because it's in a separate area to the actual stock market. I want to still be in the market. We're still along the Dow. I, I think raising cash, not a bad idea. So don't get out of positions. Keep your positions. Just raise a little cash. I think that's really a very good idea at this particular point. We've been trying to do that using stops. If we stopped out, we, we've only put that money back to work to an area that I think is under the radar and could look very good. So yeah, raising cash, I don't I don't see that as a problem at all. All right, next question came in. Let me just check my notes. PayPal. Now I can't remember what the question was with PayPal. Uh, made a leg D, remember peak Ds where other things can happen. I saw to see some round numbers recently, but I don't know, did I see anything yesterday? I didn't check. 
Uh, yesterday, 83.70 was the uh, most recent high. N leg D today gap down is down five at 78.44. So that is a peak D pull. Uh, so far, the line is still over the 14. That's good. Leg E in the weekly chart. And a horrible monthly. The monthly was once in the 300s, and now it's at 78. Uh, leg C. Oh, there's a lot of work to be done with PayPal uh, payment platform. Um, yeah, I think it's still looking quite good actually on the on the weekly and daily. I'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, so uh, A to B in the den. Oh, I said, I'll speak of platinum, palladium. Please review SBSW. It just continues to show signs of tangible bottom reversal, in my opinion. Hasn't been one of the best trades ever, but now looking pretty good finally. Yes. So let me just do this. SBSW is uh, Sabania Stillwater Inc. trading at $5.22, up 18 cents. Leg C in the daily chart, leg B in the weekly chart. Horrible monthly chart, only a great leg A, but it is starting to turn a little bit. And if I go to PALL, which is Palladium, uh, this is the uh, this is the ETF or ETN for Palladium. This has got a leg. Whoops, what did I do? B. This has got a leg E, not an S. A leg E in the daily chart. And there's this beautiful cup formation after the dreaded H successful dreaded H pattern turns into a very big cup. 
This is one of the techniques that I teach. And it's got a left side, right side, price time match. It's one week late to get to the high of the 22nd of December, the week of the 22nd, 114.71. Today's high is 113.92. It's almost there. Usually what happens if it misses by a week or two, it goes beyond that and then comes back into that, makes a cup and a kind of a handle pattern. Yes, I like it very much. Good point. So let me do this just before we wrap up and hand you over to Steve Rose. It should be a wonderful show as always with Steve and all the other hosts. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. We've had some really nice positions. What I am going to say is in the Dow right now, um, a trading okay. I want to see that nine period moving average by Wednesday or Thursday cross back to positive. It's very important. But I think we're in a very choppy period going into the election. I think that we, we could be stalling right now with limited upside unless there's just some spectacular news. So I would say raising cash is not a bad idea. We've got one of our biggest positions, stock positions, but now we start to lighten up a little bit. I think that's important. So have a great rest of the day. I'll be back later with uh, Jacob. Uh, check out my opening call, as I say, daily news